everybody. Gruhamid here for Loudwire with Mr. Mike Mushak. Thank you very much for coming of Stained, New Said, and of course the new project, Saint Asonia, Wikipedia Fact or Fiction. You've never looked at your Wikipedia or never. anything like that before, no. so let's see if you're surprised by some of the truths and falsehoods. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's start at the, the Tormented mm -hmm. release. Uh, it says that there are cassette pressings of the album, but only three are known to exist, making it impossible to find a copy. We did have cassettes made of that. Um, more than three? There was more than three made, yeah. More than three. There was more than three. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you would make only three. Three known to exist. There might, it might have been like, like 100, though. I mean, you know, I th that came out okay. in November of 96, and uh, I actually still use cassettes, so. <laughs> really? It's funny, it's harder hard to find though. I went into a store probably about a year ago and like an office depot and I asked the guy, I go, hey, do you have any cassettes? And he didn't know what they were. I've he actually no met idea. people like that who don't yeah. know what cassettes are. Yeah. Crazy. But yes. Anyways. There you go. More than there three. There was more than three, yeah. Around, maybe around a hundred, something like that. Limited release. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But I mean, can't, we put it out ourselves in Springfield, Mass. I think we did like, you know, press thousand CDs and a uh, yeah. hundred cassettes or, or maybe 300. I think that's what it was. Okay. There There's you go. There's a thousand three hundred package that we bought. There you go. Uh, it said that uh, Tormented was something of a concept album revolving around a depressed individual who eventually commits suicide. I mean, yeah, I mean, you could, you could pot, I mean, that kind of came after. We kind of put a twist on it that that's what it I was. I think they're it talking about the, gun, the gunshot yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you've, you've heard it. Well, this is what I read. Oh, okay. There's okay. The, I was the, going to say, have you heard the record? The click, click at the beginning. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, we end. kind of made that up after it was written and loosely did that. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of that. So, it kind of just fit and... Yeah. All right, there you go. Yeah. Uh, after Stained uh, acquired a concert slot with Limp Bizkit uh, just prior to the performance, uh, Fred Durst was appalled by the Tormented album cover mm -hmm. and unsuccessfully attempted to try to remove you from the bill. Correct. This is correct. Okay, that's all over Wikipedia. So and he actually stood on the side of the stage the entire set and watched the band. And then was impressed. And that's what led to us ultimately getting a record deal. Yeah, and yeah. then of course everything from there on was all positive, like working relationship and all that stuff. And even, af even after we played it was positive. I mean, it yeah, was, yeah. you know what I mean? It was, but yes, beforehand, I mean, he was yelling at Aaron and I and, <laughs> you know, oh, no. trying to get us kicked in. We just like, we're just going up and playing. What, I mean, ab he, what about it? Was it the, was it the cross? Was it the Knife through the Bible, maybe? I mean, the whole thing. Just I think. the knife through the Bible, that's it. <laughs> no, well, there you go. What, what was he yelling at you? Was it just, I don't remember. I just remember he was he wasn't happy. He was just none too pleased. Yeah, it was at the Webster's Theater in Hartford, and we were in like the oh, little been there entrance, a bunch of times. little entrance area there. Yeah. Okay, cool. There's some little history for everyone at the Webster. Yeah. Uh, and it says after hearing your four song demo, uh, Fred Durst signed you to Flip Electra uh, to record your label debut. However, he suggested that Stained become more melodic. I mean, yeah, you know, we went down to uh, Jacksonville and stayed with him. Uh, that was uh, right after Christmas of 97. Okay. And we played a gig and literally after the gig, loaded our van and trailer and four in the morning started driving to Jacksonville. Okay. And uh, we spent about a week with him and went over some, some new material that we had and kind of reworked it with him. and. Uh, and he did encourage Aaron to, to sing more, where Tormented was, you know, coming from Western Mass in, uh, you know, that time. And we were playing with a lot of, like, hardcore bands from sure. Boston. And we Big were trying to there, be, yeah. you know, as heavy as we could be. And he's like, this guy can sing. Let him sing. You know, yeah. so we kind of, you know. Was, and, ended and up it being was, good advice. And no, for sure. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Uh, and he can sing. Yes, he can. <laughs> yes, he can. You've probably heard him. Yeah. Uh, it says you expressed frustration on how label personnel were in no way intrusive on the production of Dysfunction and sold over a million copies, but after that, the band would be relentlessly hassled during the production of future albums. Um, yeah, dis Dysfunction, we made that. Nobody cared. Nobody showed up. I mean, we recorded it in, I think, like 23 days because you knew, you knew what we were doing. We had the record yeah. written rate, basically. Mixed it. 
you know, turned it in. Nobody said anything. They put it out. You know, we worked. Yes, it went platinum. You know, yeah. we worked real hard on it. And then, yeah, after that, making the next record, it was, uh, I mean, I remember, you know, getting phone calls like every night after we sent, I'll, I'll tell you the story. We sent one of the guys at the label um, the remake of Outside, It's Been a While for You, Fade, Can't Believe, and it might be one other song, but almost every song that ended up being a single off of that Damn. record. Yeah, that's a... And, and we got back, what are you guys doing? What is this? And you need to write more and... So that goes to show uh. you how you cannot trust record executives. And uh, so it was kind of from that point on that, you know, kind of changed my view on things. Jeez, yeah, uh, creative stuff should probably not be handled by the record <laughs> executives. Uh, Break the Cycle. Uh, it says that the song Waste is dedicated to two teenage fans who committed suicide. Yeah, that was, that's an Aaron thing. I know that story, and it was, okay. I don't believe it was two. I believe it was one. I believe it was from Detroit, if I remember correctly. One fan, okay. Yeah, from Detroit, yeah. So that was, a, was it someone that Aaron knew or just heard about? <sighs> The, you know, as the mother came up to me, that's the lyrics, and it's because the mother came up to him and, and told him. She okay, came to so our that, show that literally and told him the happened. story, and that's, yeah, that is exactly what it's about. Wow. F affected him pretty deep. Is that, so did he come back and tell you guys about it? You could kind of see that he was deeply affected by that story? Y yeah, for sure. Totally. And there's unfortunately been, you know, a few different stories like that, but, uh, but that one was, is, that is true. Okay. Uh, well, 2000. One fan, not two, but I know. One, yeah, yes. But anyways, yeah. 2003, uh, Stained unsuccessfully sued logo designer John Stainbrook in New York federal court for attempting to reuse the logo he had sold to the band. No, that's false. False. We didn't. We didn't sue him. He. Uh, we did buy. We did pay to use the name Stained, and he came back once the band became successful, found an attorney, and sued us. Okay, well that's a good one to correct then. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And we fought that for years. Yeah, yeah, it said that, uh, you know, even 2005, you know, a couple of years later you were fighting. Yeah, I, the lawsuits are the worst, I don't, I mean. That's not I, why you get into music. It's, it seems like a horrible thing. It, uh, it actually said that he, if, if he had won, you would have had to change the band name and forfeit all trademark claims. He just wanted money. <laughs> That's really what it boils down to. I don't know if there was any, you know what I mean? Okay, I'm glad you weren't worrying about that so much. Like, do we have to change our name? Is well, I mean, listen, you know, they found some, we had a, an agreement that was poorly written. Oh. He found an attorney that found some kind of loophole in it, and they clung to that, and that's all his attorney had to do was keep filing stuff, and it was, you know, so we just followed it through, and we got it resolved. Yes. And we're good. still stained and we own the trademarks. And Absolutely. Yeah, so. Very good. Yeah. Uh, the self-titled record. Uh, Aaron's working relationship with drummer John uh, Wysocki broke down completely, it said. And uh, it says that you said that it never came to blows, but that you were surprised that it hadn't. I might have said that. I mean, yeah. at some time. I mean, those guys definitely, you know, could be oil and water. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, gotcha. And not, uh, you know. But listen, there was, a, there was a lot of things that went on during the making of that record. It was a really, really difficult record to make for a lot of different reasons. Um, so it's all in that real uplifting documentary that's out there if anybody uh, cares. Yeah. So. Do you feel like that's part of the reason why it's the, the last stand record as of right now? No, I no? don't. Okay. No, not at all. I, it, listen, Aaron wanted to, you know, pursue a country career. And that's Absolutely. what he wants to do. And it, it, yeah. You know. Because actually, I was really happy with that record. I mean, I thought, you know, I was yeah. happy the way it came out. Good. All right, uh, last one for you. Uh, there are no plans right now for the Newstead band uh, to regroup for any further touring or recording. Uh, and Jason shut down the project in early 2014. Yeah, sounds about right. That's about right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there any particular reason? Is a. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, I. I mean, all I can say is I'm not sure that it was exactly what he expected, but I know that, you know, I mean, he still has and still writes music all the time. And uh, oh, That's good to know. Yeah. Uh, it feels like he's kind of dropped off the face of the earth a little bit. So we, I, feel I know, like we he, don't pull, I know he pulled out of the him. social media thing. I mean, you know, listen, if that's something that I've never, that's why I've never read Wikipedia. I don't, I, 
don't have Facebook or any of those other things that yeah. everybody uses, you know. Um, I, and I know he, I, I, you wanna hear a funny story. When I, the, the, how I got that gig was through uh, management really, was that they said, cause I, you know, Stain wasn't doing anything and our manager was working with him and okay. said, you know, why don't you try, try Mike? So he sent yeah. me some songs and he said the first thing he did was look up to see my Facebook page or whatever, Twitter or whatever. Okay. And he said, when I didn't have any of those, he knew he'd like me. Oh, damn. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs>